Story recapped here. Today I'm gonna explain a drama, horror, and mystery film called Castle Freak. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Duchess Diorsino supposedly lives alone in her spacious castle. However, she's keeping a cruel secret within her walls, her son Giorgio. But their relationship isn't so family-like. The Duchess prepares a bit of food for Giorgio before bringing it down to the dungeon, where she keeps him locked. Not only that, but she also gives him a whipping when she goes to see him. But soon, the Duchess meets her demise and dies alone from a heart attack. Because of this, John Riley inherits the castle as the Duchess' nephew, though he wasn't aware of this fact until recently, clueless that he's technically a duke. On the way to the castle, Janetti, the lawyer, drives John there along with the rest of his family, his wife Susan and their blind daughter Rebecca. As they walk inside the castle, Janetti explains that John is the last of the Diorsino lineage, the son of the late Duchess' younger sister. But John doesn't plan on keeping the castle and intends to sell it instead. Further in, they meet Anise, the castle's live-in housekeeper and Janetti's sister. After Janetti leaves, Susan asks Anise to prepare another bedroom for John because she doesn't want to sleep in the same room as him. That night, John visits Susan in her room, wanting her affection, but she pushes him away. The two argue about their marital problems, mostly because of John's past alcoholism that led to an accident that killed their youngest son JJ and caused Rebecca's blindness. John defends himself and says he hasn't touched any alcohol in nine months. Still, Susan can't find it within herself to forgive him. When he goes to sleep, he gets a nightmare about the night of the accident. One rainy night, he was drunk driving and took his eyes off the road to reprimand JJ, who unbuckled his seatbelt. Because there was an oncoming vehicle, he crashed their car after swerving to avoid it. He wakes up from the nightmare and hears crying within the castle walls, seemingly a child's. Intrigued, John follows the sound, thinking that it's JJ, but instead, he comes across a wine cellar. Temptation calls for him as he grabs one of the bottles, but he perseveres against the thirst for alcohol. He smashes the wine bottle instead, cutting himself in the process. As he washes the wound, An Yiz comes up behind him with a cloth. He asks her about the crying sound, so An Yiz tells him the story of Giorgio. Apparently, he died when he was five years old due to unknown causes. However, some theories point toward the Duchess killing her son after her husband, John's father, left her. Since then, the Duchess fired all the helpers and never left the castle after living alone for 42 years until her death. And Yiz concludes that the castle might just be haunted by the ghost of Giorgio. The next day, John is going to start the inventory of his assets within the castle and invites Rebecca to join her. Unlike Susan, Rebecca doesn't harbor ill feelings toward her father and doesn't blame him for her blindness. While looking around, they arrive in the Duchess' room, where John finds the whip she used on Giorgio. Although thinking it was weird, he just brushes it off as some junk. While John continues looking around, Rebecca hears some scratching, so she follows the sound. As she wanders alone, Rebecca comes across the Duchess cat and follows the feline creature when it runs away. Because of this, Rebecca unknowingly wanders into the dungeon. Soon, John finally notices that she's missing and starts calling out for her, but she's too preoccupied with the cat and even accidentally trips. Feeling herself injured, she plans on going back upstairs but hears someone crying. Rebecca feels around Giorgio's cell door, which catches his attention. Unaware of another presence, Rebecca keeps calling for the cat. When she hears John calling for her, she leaves the door to go back. However, when the cat tries to follow her, Giorgio takes and eats it. On the other hand, Rebecca Rebecca starts to panic, realizing that there's someone else in the castle. Surprised, Susan grabs her in panic concern after hearing John calling for her. Because of this, the married couple argues again as Susan points out John's irresponsibility. Rebecca stops her parents from arguing to tell them that there's somebody else in the castle, but Susan doesn't believe her. On the other hand, Giorgio sets himself free from his shackles by breaking his own thumb and bursting through the cell door. As the family has their meal, Rebecca asks An Yiz whether there's a cat within the castle, but the housekeeper says there isn't. Meanwhile, Giorgio walks around the castle and sees his reflection in the mirror. Repulsed by his own appearance, he breaks the looking glass. The sudden noise doesn't go unnoticed, so John and Susan and immediately go to investigate it. Although they think that it's just because of the castle's oldness, Rebecca insists that there's somebody else in the castle. 
That night, Giorgio visits Rebecca's room and shows attraction to the young girl. He starts touching her, but she wakes up due to the noise of his shackles. Rebecca starts to panic at the presence that she can't see, so she starts screaming in fear. Susan and John check up on her immediately, and while Susan comforts her, John looks around the castle for the supposed perpetrator. However, he doesn't notice Giorgio hiding amongst the covered furniture, camouflaging himself with a white sheet. Although John comes across the dungeon, he doesn't notice the dead cat either. Further into the castle, John locates the Diorsino's own burial place where he sees Giorgio's picture as a child, not knowing that the alleged dead child is hiding behind him. John laments at Giorgio's picture, seeing his resemblance to JJ. Later, a police officer, Forte, comes to take their statement. However, he doesn't seem to believe it much. Deeming their case to be lacking evidence, the police refuse to search the entire castle with more than 150 rooms. Angry, John tells him about the broken mirror. But because of his own hand injury, Forte thinks he's the one who broke it. After the police leaves, John calls Susan to the tombs to show him the picture of Giorgio but it's gone. They have another argument because Susan thinks John is projecting his own fault to something else. In the end, Susan says that John should have been the one that died in the crash. Because of their heated discussion, John runs to the castle roof and ponders jumping, but stops himself. Instead, he goes out drinking. He meets Silvana, a woman who can't speak English. She starts flirting with John, which he likes, so he buys her a drink. Soon, he becomes too inebriated. Therefore, the bartender tries to tell him to leave. Because of the language barrier, Forte comes by to chastise him about it. Silvana starts to argue with Forte, so John tries to avoid the confrontation by just following orders. He pays the bartender then gives Silvana some money, but she doesn't want to part with him. Because of this, John brings Silvana to the wine cellar of Castle Diorsino. The two start doing it against the wall, not knowing that Giorgio is watching from a nearby distance. Afterward, John feels guilty about his actions and tells Silvana to leave. She complies, but not before collecting payment because John didn't know she was a prostitute. John passes out, giving Giorgio the opportunity to steal the wine bottle from him. While Silvana tries to leave, Giorgio grabs her from behind with a sheet. The next day, Forte comes by, so Susan and John greet him at the gates. Forte is looking for Silvana, stating that the last time she was seen was when John brought her into the castle. Due to the discussion, Susan finds out that John cheated on her. Forte asks to search the castle grounds, but John refuses, reminding him that they didn't want to search the castle the last time they were asked to. A heated back and forth happens between the two, which ends with John saying that he will speak to his lawyer. When John closes the gate on the policeman, Susan immediately slaps him. Although John says it's because of his loneliness, Susan knows it was from intoxication. Meanwhile, Silvana wakes up shackled in the dungeon with Giorgio in front of her. She tries to escape, but he won't let her. He tries to make her drink wine, but she refuses. When he starts touching her, she tries to reciprocate, feeling around his disfigured body, but sees that he's missing a part of his privates. Giorgio tries to have his way on Silvana, so she grabs the wine bottle and smashes it to cut Giorgio. But of course, he overpowers her and roughly goes down on her chest, eating her out, literally. On the other hand, John meets with Janetti to discuss his case. The lawyer assures him that they don't have a case for John, and that it'll be difficult to convict him. However, everything changes when they get a call from Anise, who finds Silvana's purse within the castle. Because of this, it'll be easy to arrest John. Janetti takes the opportunity to blackmail John for money by offering to hide the purse for him in exchange for more payment. Janetti also reveals that the Duchess' younger sister, John's mother, had an affair with the Duchess' husband, his father, making him Giorgio's cousin and half-brother. At the castle, Anise hears a scream which leads her to Silvana's location. Hearing Anise nearing in, Giorgio removes the shackles from Silvana and hides. Seeing the grisly state that Silvana is in, Anise tries to help, but Giorgio comes up from behind to kill her. As Silvana watches Giorgio gruesomely hit Anise with the chains repeatedly, all hope diminishes from her eyes. Meanwhile, Susan starts packing her belongings alongside Rebecca's to leave John. He tries to stop them, pleading for them to stay because he will get arrested. Susan has had enough, 
but John points out that he's going to look guilty if they leave. Nonetheless, Susan is dead set on her decisions even if Rebecca doesn't share the same sentiment. As they start to leave, John remembers the whip in the Dutch's room and starts to connect the dots. He tells them that he's going to prove his innocence before running back inside the castle. However, Susan and Rebecca's cab doesn't even go far until the policemen stop them on their tracks. Forte tells Susan that they need to take John into custody and search the castle. He also adds that they need to stay to answer some questions, much to Susan's dismay. The policemen escort them back to their rooms, where they encounter Janetti, who's looking for Agnes. Forte starts hearing thudding noises, so he leaves Rebecca with another officer while he goes to investigate the noise with Susan and Janetti. At the castle's tombs, they find John breaking open Giorgio's coffin and theorizing that he's alive somewhere in the castle, but nobody believes him as the police officers cuff his hands. He keeps spouting his explanation, but nobody is listening. Soon, they come across the room with Silvana and Anise's body which finalizes their decision to arrest John. He's still adamant about his innocence, but even his own lawyer is against him now. That night, Forte comes by to tell Susan that they'll need to stay in the castle and go to the station tomorrow for an interrogation. He leaves Grimaldi and Benedetti with her to watch over them. When Forte leaves, Susan asks the remaining officers for water. When one goes to fetch a glass, Giorgio catches him with the chains. Meanwhile, John is having trouble in the station because of the language barrier. Still, he keeps insisting that Giorgio was alive. This angers Forte, making him take out his baton to threaten John in telling the truth. At the castle, Susan notices that their water still hasn't arrived, so she follows up on the other police officer. In the hallway, he comes across a white sheet on the floor. As he crouches to check it out, Giorgio jumps out and starts biting on the officer's face. Back inside the room, Susan and Rebecca pray for John, not knowing that Giorgio is spying on them from the door. When Susan goes to get water herself, Giorgio grabs her head and slams it on the wall. Right away, Giorgio goes to Rebecca's room, seeing her unclothing herself, but she immediately feels his presence and starts shouting in a panic. Thankfully, Susan isn't unconscious for too long and starts chasing after Giorgio, grabbing a knife on the way. At the police station, John finishes complying with Forte's questions, but they still aren't satisfied so they won't let him go. As tensions rise, Forte hits John on the head with a baton, but he's relentless. When Forte leaves the room, John grabs the baton and waits for a chance at escaping. The officer comes back and gets hit by John, waiting by the door. Because of this, John takes the opportunity to escape. In Rebecca's predicament, she cries as Giorgio shackles her hands. He shows her his picture as a child, then realizes that Rebecca can't see. Hence, he removes the cover on his body and starts touching Rebecca. Susan arrives, offering herself to Giorgio in exchange for her daughter. But as Giorgio comes closer, Susan manages to stab him with a knife she's hiding behind her back. Susan doesn't hesitate to free Rebecca and run away, but Giorgio is still on their tail. He jumps out from a window to chase after them, but the two manage to hide from his line of sight. While looking around, Giorgio comes across the whip that the Duchess previously used on him, so he starts smashing it around. When they hear Giorgio leave, the two try to sneak out, but Rebecca accidentally knocks over a vase. Once again, Giorgio spots them and runs after the two, trying to escape through the roof. As they're cornered, John arrives with the baton and fights against Giorgio. He baits him towards the roof, but Giorgio's whip proves effective against John. Although Giorgio manages to pin him down, John doesn't give up and ends up turning the tables on Giorgio. Still, Giorgio keeps gaining the upper hand because of his whip. Just as he starts inching closer to the mother and daughter, John notices the chain still connected to him. He pulls on it before jumping off the castle's roof. Taking Giorgio with him, Susan immediately runs to John's aid, but he's already dying. During the funeral service for all the victims, including John, Susan smiles at Forte, who comes by to pay his respect. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.